Now let me introduce to today's speaker, Mr. Siddharth Mahanti, who is currently working at PepsiCo. Mr. Siddharth Mahanti is a professional with his educational background and extensive domain experience in finance, project management, and chartered management, holding a bachelor's degree. Holding a bachelor's degree in economics and master's in business administration, with specialization in international banking and finance, Mr. Siddharth has honed his skills and expertise over a career spanning nearly a decade. His academic foundation in economic coupled with the advanced understanding of financial system and international banking has equipped him with a comprehensive understanding of global financial market and their intricate working. Siddharth's profile, the journey, professional journey, sorry. Siddharth's professional journey reflects a dedication to excellence with nearly a decade of hands-on experience in various roles within the finance industry. His expertise encompasses financial analysis, project management, and change management, making him adept at navigating complex financial landscapes and driving organizational transformation. Siddharth's career graph underscores his commitment to continual growth and innovation, positioning him as a valuable asset in any financial or project management endeavor. He has a wide exposure in national and international MNCs like Reliance Geo, Tata Play, Z4S, and now currently working at PepsiCo. Thank you, Thank you so much, Alok. Good afternoon, thanks. everyone. Uh, first and foremost, my special thanks to ISTD Bhuvneshwar chapter and uh, IIMT to give me this opportunity. And without further ado, let's get into the topic. So uh, the topic I have been given is skill set required for successful interview and resume writing. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself. I am Siddharth Monti. I have been working for a little bit less than 10 years, like correctly put a decade. I started my uh, professional career with Reliance Geo Infocom Limited. This is into uh, prepaid and postpaid mobile services as well as internet service provision, which we call Wi Fi. After that, I worked with Tata Play. Tata Play was previously known as Tata Sky. This is into your dish services. Uh, in Bhuvneshwar, I worked with B4S. This is Group 4 Securitas. This is the security agencies. And right now, I'm working with PepsiCo, Global Business Services. Uh, throughout my career, I have been mostly associated in the finance domain. So it's finance operations, financial planning and analysis. And gradually, I have transformed into project management as well as change management. So to start, uh, first, when we talk about an interview, what we need to understand an interview is how we correlate ourselves with the job opening. So since we are talking about ourselves, uh, if you look at the center, yeah, I'm sorry, I hope I'm audible. If can yeah, someone yeah. put me a audible. Thank Carry you. On. Yeah. So if you look at this diagram, since we talk about an interview, the interview is how you will do a specific job or how you will fit into an opening. It is about you. People mostly focus about an interview, but an interview comes at a stage when you have been selected or shortlisted. So what's important before an interview is how good we look on paper. By paper, I mean it could be a CV. CV stands for curriculum vita. It's a resume. Resume is a more defined, precise risk format. And how equally good we look on the job portals. As we all know, there are multiple job portals, be it Nokri, LinkedIn, Monster. It's very important that the experience, talent, and skill sets that we have, they are advertised properly into these job portals, as well as our CV and our resume. People uh, mostly use these words interchangeably, which is incorrect. Because if you look at a CV, I'll just show you a CV. Uh -huh. If uh, someone could just confirm if my screen is visible. Yeah, visible. Yes. So as you see, I clearly mention in the heading that this is my curriculum vita or my CV. If I drag down or if we have a look over here, 
you'll see that my CV is of six pages. In these six pages, when we talk about a CV, the overall objective of a CV is to mention all the work experience, skill sets, and talents that you have and how you have defined your duties. Simultaneously, if I switch, this, as you can see, this is my resume. And this resume is of three pages. The major difference between a CV and a resume is when I know what sort of exact opening I'm applying for or what is the job description, I will move ahead with my resume because my resume is something that the interviewer or the job selector will have to correlate to directly. Like I said, I've been working for many years and I have experience in finance, management, project management, and change management. Just have a look at my CV. I clearly mentioned that I have experience in the following things. But if I switch to my resume, my focus over here is the very role that I'm applying to. So I clearly mentioned the change management thing that I'm applying for. Okay. So I just gave you a brief introduction, you know, about the CV and uh, resume. Next, when we look at an interview, it's about how have you prepared yourself? And we follow over here something coined as the A to Z principle. Uh, as we all know, the English language, it's made up of alphabets, A to Z. Then alphabets are made into words. Words are made into phrases and sentences. So when we say, how have you prepared yourself the A to Z principle, it means it's like these days when we used to take exams. There's something called a question bank. No interviewer will ask you questions out of the blue. Yeah, they will always have a specific set of questions. And gradually, as you start taking interviews and you have worked for some time, you will come to know what are the questions being asked. Irrespective of you being an experienced professional or a fresher, the first question normally asked is tell us something about yourself. When a an interview asks you this question, they want to get down straight into what sort of work you have done and how does that work correlate to the opening for which you are applying. The major mistake while conducting interviews that I have seen people do is, for example, I'm taking an interview for a finance role. People start their experience with project management. It's not that it is incorrect, but to you know, to make things interesting when an interview is a, for a specific opening or a specific project, the interviewer would like to know how well you have worked on that. It helps that you give a general idea on what all work you have done, but then it's always good to start with something that is directly related to the opening. So like I said, as you normally start working, attending interviews, Majority of the time, the first question you would see would be, tell us something about yourself. And at the end of the day, the final question, if interviewers have time, or especially if there is an HR personnel taking your interview, they would ask you something like, tell us about your hobbies. Again, coming to the hobbies, most of us, we say we like reading, we watch movies, you know, shows on OTT platforms, but surprisingly, as soon as you ask a person, like, since you said you like reading, what was the latest book that you read? People go blank. I mean, so my point being, in an interview or in your CV or resume, when you mention you have a hobby, please be prepared for the questions relating to it too. If there is an interviewer who's aged more than you or experienced more than you, they would like to know what sort of book you have read and how does it result in your well-being or development. If you were reading books when you were in the 12th class and from graduation till your working life, you haven't read books, please don't mention such things in your resume or CV. Now, since we are talking about ourselves, all of us have certain talents, have certain skill sets. We are experienced one way or the other. But 
we also need to understand how to communicate be it resume writing be it speaking in an interview your communication skills need to be pretty good too normal understanding for layman is when we talk about communication skills we focus on uh, what sort of accent they have or uh, what words they can use but communication is basically how you present yourself whatever is going on in your brain whatever experience you have how are you taking it out from your mouth that is your communication skill again having said that if you look at our resume our resume is a virtual representation of ourselves so preparing a resume it also is something that is a communication skill because you are not present over there but your resume is presenting you in front of an interviewer or an hr person finally uh, as you start working even if you have one years of work experience and you are applying to another company all interviewers and managers would like to know what were your present skills and what have you upskilled to so that's what i'm talking about over here present skills versus upskilling and i believe that is what the collaboration between iistd and uh, iimt is doing we all have specific skill sets that we learn on the job by upskilling i mean two things over here one is getting better at those present skills for example in most organizations they ask you a simple question are you comfortable with ms office so by ms office they mean microsoft office for us finance professionals most of the questions are related to microsoft excel the spreadsheets or the the workbook as we define it so interviewers want to know like after working for 10 years what was the level at which you started your ms excel and where have you reached now uh, normally what i have seen when i passed out from my mba was that uh, the market was divided into people who were good at speaking versus people who were good at making presentations and ppts now after working for around 10 years the profiles have merged into such a way that if you are a good speaker that is fantastic but you need to be a good presenter too no one is going to prepare the ppts for you you are going to have to prepare it yourself and you are going to speak accordingly so it's very important that you keep upskilling yourself you build on your existing skill set in my case predominantly i have built myself on microsoft office and sap and other than that i have upskilled myself by acquiring new skills or technology usage predominantly being the software in which organizations work so i am just starting over here with the resume because like i said us getting into an interview first starts with we applying for the job role when we apply for the job role it's the basis of our resume or our cv if the cv or the resume doesn't get shortlisted you will not be having an interview so it's pretty important to understand what's a good resume the first point would be it should be in sync with the job description so like i said if i show you my resume the position that i was applying to was for a change management professional so i'm ensuring over here that change management is mentioned at the top because this is the profile that we are talking about other thing would be if i switch back to my ppt keywords match so i'll just correlate these two points in sync with job description and keywords be it nokri monster linkedin these these job you know these job portals they have a particular software that works on job word matching so instead of a change management professional if i like if i just write an experienced professional with 8 plus years of experience my chances of my cv getting shortlisted keep reducing so what i did i read the job description properly and whatever work i have done i put those correlated those words 
and made my resume accordingly. So if I come over here, these are my areas of expertise. Now, the reason for me mentioning these areas of expertise are first, I have worked in these. Second, I want my resume to be selected. And third, this is exactly the words mentioned in the job description or the profile that I received. They need someone who has worked on change strategy, change impact analysis, change readiness, and whether I'm good with software. Like I said, whether I'm good with Excel and SAP. Just to build over here further, I have written my industry expertise over here because the opening that I had applied to, they are a consulting firm. Consulting firms, what they do is they provide their manpower to multiple organizations, give them advice, consulting, and make money. So by mentioning my industry expertise over here, what I'm showing to the recruiter is that Right now, you have an opening for a specific industry. But other than this, I've also worked in various industries. So this is what makes my resume stand out from others. All right. Next, we move on to the structure, content, and weightage. I'm sure when we were all in schools and colleges, we had to write an English composition. So a good composition always had a heading, then it had a good body and a conclusion. Similarly, your resume is something that should be structured to have good content and it should give weightage to the opening that is being discussed about. So when I had gone through this uh, job opening, the first thing they mentioned over there that the person should be a good communicator or should have good communication skills. So if you look at my responsibilities currently in PepsiCo, in G4S, and Tata India, I already started my points by saying that I had supported streams within the wider financial operations function. And I had cooperated with all stakeholders to understand and document requirements. Other than correlating it to the job description, I am starting off with the very first point in the job description. Do you have good communication skills? Yes, I do have good communication skills, and that is how I put them in work. Second is, uh, okay, second, moving on to this next point, it's about the weightage. Now, weightage, if I just go back to my CV. I'll show you the weightage over here. Based on this CV, the role that I was applying to, it was into financial management. So the majority of my responsibilities that I did, I started all of them with the things to do with finance. I could have put management reporting first, but the reason I planned my structure and gave more weightage to financial operations is because that is what the profile or the people who want you to be selected are looking for. So even though it might not seem that important, you have these skill sets, please always start your resume with the skill set based on the job that you are applying for. That is how you'll ensure that your CV is shortlisted or your resume is shortlisted. Plus, you ensure that the person going through your resume is involved, is indulged in it. They, you know, they derive pleasure out of it. It makes them feel good while looking into your CV or resume, how the case would be. Timeline. When we talk about timeline, uh, I have come across while interviewing CVs or resumes where people, they just start haphazardly. In 2005, they were with a company that is mentioned in the talk. The current company that they are mentioning, that they are working with, it's mentioned somewhere in between. When we talk about timeline, what people want to know is where are you currently working and where did you start from? So please always ensure that your resume is made in a descending order from current to past. That is how the normal flow is. And then finally, make sure that you mention your qualification and competencies. Qualifications don't only mean what is the major course in which you did a master's or a bachelor's. 
right right now you see multiple people doing project management skills they are acquiring teaching skills soft skills if you have done these courses and you have got certifications from them please make sure to mention it in your resume finally coming to competencies so like you all know there are hard skills and soft skills hard skills are the ones we use in our job and we learn during our job soft skills are something that we have been learning from childhood days like wishing someone greeting saying thank you so all these competencies like your pressure handling capability your ability to lead a team work individually please make sure you mention them and you mention them in a way that when you are asked questions about them you can come up with an answer immediately you don't have to wait or think for an answer uh, now finally uh, coming to the point like how to make your interview successful like i said in the starting interview is all about yourself we need to advertise ourselves while being interviewed as well as the resume that we mentioned it should be a reflection of yourself so since we are done with the resume part let's assume your resume was in sync with the job description and your resume is shortlisted now you are having an interview that is a face to face communication with the interviewer either by online or physical mode so first is the most important thing is whenever someone asks you a question please wait for them to complete the question the skill set over here is normal but very important listening uh, for me when i had taken my first interview i was so excited that my cv has been shortlisted i'm going for an interview the interview asked me a simple question like uh, what was the latest project work that you did but as soon as i heard what was the work that you did i jumped on to something that i had done two years ago and the interviewer had to correct me the question was tell us about your latest project work but i did a mistake of not listening to the question fully or getting excited and missing it and answering in something else so the first obviously important point would be listening second is once you listen you have to interpret the question also it is interpretation skill normally during interviews what happens they ask you tell us something about yourself tell us about your achievements and then they put up a question now if you have someone who has worked in multiple organizations and they ask you uh, tell us about your achievement something that you did that benefited the organization now this question it can be related to your latest company or amongst all the companies that you have worked which one was the best since this is a general or open ended question and you want to give the correct answer please ask the interviewer sir ma'am is it the one that i have done currently or are you asking me what i have done in my career as a whole let them answer the question and then you come up with your answer but interpret the questions correctly third would be questions and answers and the skill set over here is preparation like i mentioned in the start the a to z principle all alphabets range from a to z and words are made up accordingly think of all the questions that people can ask you note them down prepare your answer simultaneously there cannot be any strange questions like if you are someone who's working in the academics field and you have uh, completed your phd they would ask you how many publications have you done and honestly when you think about it you are applying from one university to another this would be one of the questions no one is going to ask you questions out of the blue like when is the alien race going to come over and take over or right so there will be a set of questions from which they ask you answers prepare accordingly fourth would be your current experience versus the desired experience that the interviewer is seeking how do you correlate them one of the questions i faced is that since that you have worked in the telecom industry for more than 7 years and right now you are moving on to pepsico which is into foods and beverages how would you say you would set up a project what are the important things you would look at so my understanding of the question was we are talking about a project have i done any project in reliance answer is yes so 
even though the manufactured product or the services might be different, I am correlating my existing experience to the current question. So, the skill set over here is correlation. When you think about something, try to correlate it. There might be Maggie, there might be Top Ramen. At the end of the day, they are both noodles. It might be an educational institute. It might be a debt-taking institute, a debt recovery agent. But communication would be, again, one thing which would bring about the correlation factor. Uh, then we would move to upskilling, which and the skill set over here is evolution. Like I said before, upskilling comes in two parts. Whatever existing tools and practices you are doing, how you build on them, how do you go further? I started off, there is a software called Tableau. The purpose of Tableau is to make sure that the amount of time that we spent making preparations, you can do it in that software. So I started as a normal user in Tableau software. And now I am a super user. So this is my evolution based on the existing skill set. Another skill set would be whichever organization I worked for, I was never into the development field, but into the end user field. So SAP. SAP, SAP has multiple modules like material management, FICO. So I worked on these modules and I gained the skill set. So Again, this was new skill sets that I built. So two, like I said, existing ones and the new. And this shows my evolution. The interviewer, he or she, they get interested that, yeah, this is one person who can do things on their own. And like I said, uh, during my work career, what I have seen, nowadays, mostly even in the education field, nowadays, it's not that the lecturers are only conducting sessions. They are also looking into administrative work, doing sales for the organization they work for. So even though your job profile might state one thing, they expect multiple roles and responsibilities out of it. Third, uh, then would be the point would be, even if you have an online interview or a physical interview, please ensure that you are there before the stated time. This is the punctuality skill set. If I talk about online interviews, I have seen multiple times. And when I say multiple, multiple times, the, uh, you know, the person forwarding you the MS Teams or Zoom link has sent you an expired link or one that has been changed. If you have an interview at, let's say, 10 o'clock in the morning and you log in at 10 o'clock and you don't find that link working, you start panicking. The interviewer is waiting. So, since interviews are about impression management, we are correcting, we are creating an incorrect impression. So, like they say, you know, always be before time, at least 15 minutes before, before joining, before uh, taking this uh, session, I checked out my mic and my headphones to ensure they are working such that during the presentation, I don't go have to, to go back to Soma or Alok to tell them that, you know, there is something wrong over here. Especially for finance professionals, we also have to give live demos. Like I said, nowadays they expect you to do multiple things and they state, okay, what sort of level are you at in MS Excel? So my answer is, I'm pretty good. So then the next question comes immediately is, are you ready to give a live presentation? And they make you do live presentations. So you have to back up your words also. And this also shows how much actually you know while you have work. And this has become common across all fields. They even ask salespeople to deliver a sales pitch upfront. They ask us finance professionals to show our proficiency with the tools and software that we work with. So be ready for a test. The reason they keep your interviews from half an hour, 45 minutes to one hour is because nowadays, especially after COVID, people are carrying out live tests where they want to know whether you are good, as you say. And finally, show your inquisitiveness, ask questions. Many people, when they apply for a job, they talk to some people from the recruitment or HR team. When your interview is being conducted, it is being conducted by actually the function, power, a person to whom you're supposed to report or work. So one of the normal questions that I ask is, how soon do you expect the candidate 
who selected to join you. And the reason for asking this is, I don't know what communication the recruiter and the interviewer had. Maybe the interviewer is under the impression that I have a notice of 30 days. But actually, right now, I have a notice of 90 days. So I want to ensure that the person who is interviewing me knows about the current situation. Plus, it's always good to ask questions to show your inquisitiveness. Another good question that normally people ask is, you know, if the interviewer doesn't give an introduction of how long they have been working in the current organization, people ask, like, how long have you been working over here? What are the good things you find? So it's always good to ask questions. Don't just after you have an interview and they ask you, do you have any questions? And if you have questions, just ask them. Don't hold back. Uh, so this was my short and simple presentation. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'll take them, please. Any of the participants, are, uh, if they have any kind of questions, they are uh, open to ask they are, or, else they can, or else they can type it on the chat box. Yes, Mr. Mohanty, Sir. there are some situations, some of the candidates, they come and discuss with us that before entering the interview, most of the people, they have a fear psychosis, some sort of tension uh, they carry and how to handle it, first question. And related to that, if a candidate is very comfortable introducing himself or herself after that, two questions he or she is not able to answer. There is another tension emerges. So please guide the listeners that if you have experienced this and how you have managed it, or overall, how you will guide people that under these circumstances they have to carry on properly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Those are fantastic questions. So the first question is uh, about people, you know, before entering into an interview or joining it, they have this, uh, you can call it stress, you can call it pressure. The only way to handle it is through, I believe is through calming yourself down. It is easier said than done. But if I talk about the punctuality part, Normally, you know, people have this uh, impression that if they switch on the video and they see the interviewer in front of them, people start panicking. So why don't we do the reverse part? Why don't you join an interview before the interview? And you have to remember interview is by far one of the simplest things. They will ask you questions and you are supposed to answer. No one is going to kill you or have a fight with you. And the answers to questions are very simple. Either you know the answers or you don't know the answers or you are going to try. So I would suggest the basic mindset would be to control yourself and focus more on the answers than the fear factor. And like I said, it's easier said than done. But me, I had to like this is an ability that develops which time it does take a bit of time, but it will come to you. And the second question is, uh, of course, if they ask you 10 questions, there might be two or three questions that you don't know. So now the thing is, like I said, an interview is simple because you are supposed to answer. And you can only answer if you don't know the answer. If an interview asked you 10 questions and you could not answer two or three of them, the interviewer has still decided to pursue with the interview. So it doesn't mean that the interviewer is judging us only based on the things that we couldn't reply. He or she is also judging us on the questions that we did reply. So don't process it or don't think too much. It's like, you know, when we want to eat something, let's say today we want to eat mutton biryani. We are focused about eating mutton biryani and our next focus is where are we going to order it for or get it from? We are not focusing on the exclusive fact that if we don't order it from Swiggy or Zomato, it might not be tasty. So take interviews like that. Focus on the answers that you have got and leave the rest to the interviewer. Like people who pray or believe in God, 
I think they do a simple thing. They work hard and they leave the remaining thing to God. So you can apply the same logic to interviews too. Work on your interviews, answer the questions and leave rest to the interviewer. I think that would be one of the best ways to go on.